The Ministry of Agriculture boasts that it has signed an agreement with representatives of the agricultural industry. Quite the opposite is said by those involved themselves, and they stress that the protest will continue. We have signed a communique from the meeting. It's good that we are moving in this direction of an agreement, but for the time being, there is no agreement because nothing has been promised yet. First of all, we need to make everyone aware that this is not an agreement between farmers, because those people who took part in the debate and then signed on the document were very carefully selected and chosen in such a way that these agreements were signed. Poland is not the first country where protests are taking place. Earlier protests were held in Spain, Italy and Germany, among others. European farmers oppose the provisions of the Green Deal, and Polish farmers say there are other reasons as well. Closing the border to agri-food products and regulating this flow, sealing the flow to be able to check whether these products that enter us are healthy, because we have repeatedly shown that this is not the case. All the absurd provisions for the Green Deal, in this agricultural side of things, which is slowly changing, and for the time being some gentle concessions are there, but it's mostly cosmetic. Farmers are listening to the public and plan to change the form of protests. I understand that the inconvenience of the blockades is high, and that is why we want to change the form of the protests, because without the support of society, we will not be able to gain anything. And unfortunately, the government, you can see, is playing on this, so that public support for us will fall. The latest idea is to protest in front of MPs' offices on April 4th, and we are coming with manure, and we want to talk to each MP in his office. On March 28th, there will be a meeting between representatives of the Polish and Ukrainian governments on the entry of agricultural products from Ukraine into Poland. The farmers are waiting for the outcome of these talks, but as they say, they will protest until the government meets all their demands. More than a million customers across Ukraine have been left without electricity after overnight Russian airstrikes on energy facilities. This is the most serious massive attack, with more than 150 rockets and missiles. Rockets also fell on residential buildings in Kharkiv, Kherson, Khmelnytsky, Odessa and Zaporizhia, among others. At least three people were killed and dozens injured. After the first explosion, there were several more. Everything was flying through the air. You can't imagine it. I had only one goal, to ensure my child's life. I rescued him from under the rubble. He's fine, thank God. Bogu. About 700,000 residents in the eastern Kharkiv region, at least 200,000 in the southern Odessa and southeastern Dnipropetrovsk regions, and another more than 100,000 in the central Poltava region, are experiencing power problems. I need fuel for the generator so the pump can get some water. I'm not going far. We are collecting humanitarian aid, and I need to reach the elderly in Volhaisk and Kupyansk, but there is no cellular coverage, so we can't contact the elderly. We have to go there and see what's going on. Despite the fact that there have been many attacks on Kharkiv overnight and there is no electricity at the moment, our stores are working. We are well prepared, and all our generators are working. In an attack on energy infrastructure, Russian rockets fell on Ukraine's largest dam, Dniproches. Russia launched more than 150 rockets and missiles, only half of which could be neutralized, as they are increasingly difficult to bring down hypersonic, ballistic or maneuvering missiles. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who in recent days has appealed to Western allies to provide more air defenses, condemned the attack and said work was underway to repair electricity supplies in nine regions. In Poland, the 5% VAT rate on food is returning as of April 1st, which will make us pay more for everyday products like bread, butter, milk, 
meat, fish, or eggs. This is a wrong decision. The inflationary basket is 30 percent of food, so inflation can increase by about two percentage points. Budgets for other expenses will decrease, and this will worsen the pace of economic development, unfortunately. Figures from the Central Statistical Office in Poland show that Poles spend more than one-fourth of our household budget on food. Experts calculate that an average family of four will pay nearly one and a half thousand zloty more for food in 2024. At the same time, when we have all-time high interest rates, families are struggling to pay loan installments, and the announced increase in energy prices from July will lead to the fact that the situation of millions of households will really deteriorate drastically, unfortunately. Prices will increase not only from Easter, it is already more expensive at gas stations. On average, 95 is more expensive by 4 groszy per liter, 98 by 10 Polish groszy. I don't see any fulfillment of specifics. Prime Minister Donald Tusk announced that gasoline would be at 5.15 and is over 7 złoty. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk made a promise in the election campaign that if he were head of the Polish government, gasoline would be at 5.19 Polish złoty. If I were the Prime Minister, then gasoline would be at 5 złoty and 19 groszy. Donald Tusk really said that? Word of honor. After all, I would not come up with such things. Oh my goodness, this is my comment. The government's decisions do not make things easier, and it would have been enough for them to fulfill their own promises. On Thursday, the Civic Coalition rejected in the parliament the Confederation's proposal to increase the tax-free amount from 30,000 to 60,000 zwolte. The ruling coalition's deputies de facto voted against their own election promise. Are you annoyed by overpriced and high bills? That's why, with you in mind, the Civic Coalition will carry out the most radical tax cut. This will be a real tax cut, such as we have never seen in Poland before. Each of you will benefit from the reform of the tax-free amount. Electricity bills will go up starting in July. Law and Justice demanded that state aid for households be extended until the end of the year. Last December, this was not agreed to by the currently ruling coalition, which is now talking about the increases rather reluctantly. I would like to see prices not increase more than 30 zloty per month when the system changes, and this is such a proposal. We estimate average consumption for a one-person pensioner household. The forecasts are more pessimistic. When electricity prices are unfrozen, a Polish family can expect bills of 360 zwolte per month, or more than 100 zwolte more than now. According to expert estimates, the reinstatement of the 5% VAT rate on food will hit all Poles. However, those in power are certainly pleased that it will increase state budget revenues by up to 12 billion złoty. Łukasz Muda, TV Republika. The European Union's 27 leaders gathered on Friday, March 22nd in Brussels to debate the EU response to farmers' protest over environmental rules in the Eurozone. The European Commission proposed imposing tariffs on imports of grain from Russia and Belarus in an attempt to prevent Moscow and its ally from distorting EU markets and to placate farmers who have protested for months over cheap imports. Belgium's Prime Minister Alexander de Croo said the sector EU climate policies and European industry should work together. I think what is important is that uh, in, 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 in this domain we do not create an opposition between, migra- uh, between uh, agriculture, um, the Green Deal and industry. All of them need to, work, uh, need to work together. It is not one or the other. It's organizing the Green Deal in such a way that industry, industry can stay in Europe and that a healthy agricultural um, activity can, uh, can take place. Latvian Prime Minister Evika Silina said she welcomed the European Commission's proposal. We are uh, very pleased that the Commission has a proposal uh, to put in uh, tariffs on uh, Russia's grain, so our um, competition within Europe would not be affected, but so we will contain Russia more financially and economically. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar talked about the EU calling for a ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. Of course, 
the European Union calling for a ceasefire and it would appear the US is doing the same thing now uh, doesn't make it happen. Uh, what's necessary is that the parties to the conflict agree to a ceasefire uh, and that is of course uh, the Israeli government uh, and Hamas and we need to put as much pressure on them as we can uh, to make that happen. Farmers all across Europe have also been protesting over environmental rules they say are too stringent and make their businesses unviable.